welcome to the next lecture of uh, knowledge and data. Uh, the last lecture of this first module will be about uh, simple knowledge graph logic. So after having argued why knowledge graphs are useful tools in the first place for representing data in a shareable way and uh, discussing some formal systems like propositional logic or arithmetic or uh, some, some concept logic, I'm now going to introduce a very simple formalism that might look a bit more complicated than it is to assign formal semantics to knowledge graphs. And I'm looking at simple knowledge graphs, but let's see this, uh, how this works and why this is a problem and so forth. So the main thing is that computers don't understand images. So while we have been able to interpret our databases as a graph in rather natural ways, I believe, I think this is a logical way of, of looking at the tables that I introduced uh, 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 in one of the previous video lectures. The computer doesn't know what we mean by this image. So what is uh, the difference between an arrow and a, a circle? And is there a difference between strings that start with a, a quote or not. Um, so we need to tell the computer what we mean by this. Or differently, even stronger, we need to find a representation mechanism that a computer can work with. And it cannot work with this implicit representation of a graph. So we need this language to write down the knowledge graphs unambiguously as the computers don't understand the images. But what does it mean that we have these circles and lines and words? So we need to define precisely which statements are correct so that we can interp in interpret them. We need first, of course, to, to say which of these statements are well formed in the first place. And then we need to define what these statements are supposed to mean precisely. So not just it's a bullet, it, it's, it's some, some sort of circle uh, and uh, there is an error between these. What, what do we mean by this? So we do all this, of course, because we want the predictable inference. So we want to make sure that we derive the same things from the graph uh, where whoever looks at this graph, that we can derive the same facts. So let's look at a simple part of the knowledge base um, here which we have written down in a way that is closer to the computer to understand. So we define a set, a knowledge base as a set of these statements, which start with parentheses and then have a string and another string and a third string. So we have a vocabulary and we have to sort of tell the computer in which order this vocabulary can be applied so that it can analyze it later. And what we do is basically that we write down, if we have uh, an arrow between two of these, uh, these circles, then we just write down the name of the first circle. Uh, then we write down the predicate, so the name of the arrow, and we write down the name of the third of the circles. And these things we, we will call triples. So basically our knowledge base here is a simple extract is now a set of strings that signifies a set of three triples. Netherlands name Netherlands, Netherlands has capital Amsterdam and now Amsterdam is a capital. This is the top right corner of the, another, the top corner of this, this graph. And we've now represented it in some more understandable way for a computer. Don't get me wrong, the computer still sees everything it reads there as individual strings. But now there are some rules in which we can write a program that interprets these strings. And this is the core. So what we want this for is that we can now ask questions, namely, does this knowledge base, this knowledge graph, entail a triple such as Amsterdam as a capital? And this one is simple, I would say, because it is part of the graph. So we would say, yes, this is true. Can we also say that Amsterdam is a city, is a valid 
der derived and tailed triple from our knowledge base. And in a way, this is a sort of a, a, a doubt, I would say, because it is not part of the knowledge graph. And therefore, given a, an, an initial understanding, I would say it's not entailed by the knowledge graph. And the logic that I will introduce today will not cover the case where this would indeed be the case that Amsterdam as a city is entailed by this knowledge base. It depends on how we, what kind of logic we apply. So in this case, the simple semantics that we apply, we would answer no, it's not entailed. We want it not to be entailed that Amsterdam is a country because there is no link and there shouldn't be a link. But we could also use this formal inference or uh, calculation, this is semantics, to answer queries. So which of the x things are in a, re a country relation according to our knowledge base? And there are two answers. We have two triples in the knowledge base, namely Netherlands is a country and Belgium is a country. And this is the basis for the Sparkle query language that we are going to look into next week as well. And it gives us a formally well understood way of querying a knowledge graph database. The big trick is here, so I've, I made these errors because I want to say that we have to find a interpretable, interpretable representation of an, a, a graph in order to be able to answer queries and questions about this graph. And the trick now comes that we translate this statements, this explicit strings, in a way in the semantics back to the intuition of a graph. And this might be a bit complex to understand, but basically we look at some intuition of how do we relate concepts in a knowledge graph. We write down this in a, in a, in a language where, which is really just an enumeration of strings, but we translate it, we interpret it in the mathematical structure of graph theory. And this is what we're going to do now. So there are different variants before I start of these knowledge graphs. There is the grounded ones where we only have nodes of the graph or circles in our diagram, concepts that are fully specified, that either are a string or have a name like Netherlands and Amsterdam. Next week, we, in the context of the web, we will have to extend this to a notion which also has some kind of variables. So the North Pole has a geographic location with a certain longitude and a certain latitude. But it doesn't really make sense to give this geographic location thingy a name. So one would usually leave it free and have this abbreviation to say, okay, there is something related to the North Pole that has a longitude and latitude, and that describes properties of the North Pole. This is a, a, a variant of knowledge graph logic that also has um, variables, and that makes the semantics far more complicated. So we look at this next week. For now, Let's keep it with the simple round of graphs. And that basically means that we have only two different types of things. We have a vocabulary. And here we don't make a distinction between objects and literals. So I said in, in one of the previous slides that we talked about Amsterdam as a resource, as an object, and the string Netherlands as a literal, which is uh, uh, slightly different in, in uh, in uh, the, the, the supposed meaning, but for this very simple language, we treat them in the same way. The second type of things that we talk about is properties, predicates, relations between objects. So we have basically a vocabulary that consists of two parts. We have vocabulary V to talk about the concepts and we have a vocabulary P that talks about the predicates. And then we define triples, and there are two different ways of defining the triples. We can define T as the uh, Cartesian product of V times P times V, which is one way of saying that 
you need a value a, a, something from the vocabulary v you need something from the set predicate p and another element of the set v of the vocabulary so basically you get triples from v from p and from v and the same is basically what you do if you have an inductive definition you first say that you define elements in your vocabulary v r1 and r2 which is refers to resources and predicates predicate p in, in the set of predicates and if those are in v and p respectively then what is called the triple r1 p r2 is also uh, is, is a triple so it's really really simple the only thing we do is we take a string uh, sorry we start with the parentheses we take a string a comma a string a comma a string and a closing parentheses and the only thing we have to make sure is that the first string comes from our vocabulary v the second from the vocabulary p and the third from the vocabulary v again this is a triple and then a knowledge graph is a set of triples t and that's all i have to say this definition is only for very for a simple variant of knowledge graphs and the more expressive ones we'll see later so it's very important to see that uh, these um, syntactic objects that we've been talking about they're nothing else than strings i've mentioned that before now and basically this means that if i have a term like netherlands name netherlands in reality if you translate if you look at it from computer perspective in ascii code for example then this means netherlands and then you have the free space you have a name you have the uh, the free space again and then you have um the the quote and you have netherlands again and you have another quote but the the computer doesn't understand anything what this is supposed to mean so we need to assign values to those triples according to this intended meaning which is not a, a, a list of strings but according to a graph and this makes us a bit sort of cyclic sound cyclic but it isn't so let's see how we do this we now interpret such a triple in the following way we build interpretations similar to what we did before and an interpretation has a set ir which is called the universe a set of arbitrary objects our resources and then we have two functions namely one that assigns an element of the domain to each word in the vocabulary so it's a function from v vocabulary to ir the universe and then the only thing we also need is another function that assigns to each property p each relation a subset of the power set so a set of triple uh, of of um, uh, uh, tuples let's see how this works oh no i, I will give you an example in the next uh, slide uh, first i want based on this notion namely i have an interpretation which is just a universe and two functions according to this definition a triple spo is true with respect to this interpretation ir i function ir and ip if the and this is now the trick if the interpretation of the subject the interpretation of the object is in the interpretation of the property and if this is the case then uh, the interpretation is called a model for the triple so let me repeat this because this is important we often use the abbreviation spo for a subject as a part of the universe predicate and object as another concept uh, or, um, object we want to relate to and this spo is true with the, the the interpretation which consists of the universe and two functions if the interpretation of the subject and the interpretation of the object are in a in in a, in, a, in the property once it is interpreted as a pair okay based on this notion of a model we use exactly the same notion we had before that an interpretation is a model of the knowledge base if it's a model for all the triples and then we can based on this definition we can say a triple is entailed by a knowledge base if it's true in all the models of the knowledge base Oof. let's see with an example i think that should make it easy 
So I've taken an even smaller subset of the knowledge base now. The Netherlands has a name Netherlands and Netherlands has a capital Amsterdam. So these are two tuples in the knowledge base. And let's see what an interpretation is. What does it mean for something to be an interpretation? So this is the first example. And as I did before in one of the examples, you can really choose a rather stupid set of universe in these cases because it has to hold for all, the, the, the definition of entanglement holds for all interpretations. So let's take this one where we just have four strings, namely n, 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 and i, r, r. And of course, it's clear that n somehow is supposed to mean Netherlands, and n is somehow means, meant to be the string Netherlands. Amsterdam is uh, um, represented by the, 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 the a, and R is meant to be stand for Rotterdam, but we don't even need it. So in my knowledge base, Amsterdam is interpreted to be the A, Netherlands is interpreted to be the N, and Netherlands is interpreted to be the NN. So each object in each part thing of my vocabulary, each string in my vocabulary, like Netherlands and Netherlands in quotes and Amsterdam, is mapped to exactly one element of the domain. And then the predicates, name and has capital, they are sets of pairs. So basically what this says is that the object n here and the object nn, they are related by the name relation. And the same holds for capital. n and a are related by the capital relation. So this is one interpretation, the one. There's a second one where we have exactly the same universe, but now the has capital relation is also N and R. So this basically says that Rotterdam is also the related in a has capital relation with the Netherlands. In a way, this doesn't contradict the knowledge base that we have above, but I will get to that later. There's a third possible interpretation, even with the same universe, and that is that n and n, n are related by the name relation, so then nothing changed there. But then we have the has capital relation between a and n, n. And you will, if you think about it, uh, look at it again, you, you will notice that obviously this is not an intended meaning that a and n, n are related. So these were three interpretations for the same universe, but we can also add an interpretation for a different universe. And this universe is, diff the universe is even crazier. So we have the, um, the at sign, the dollar sign, the percentage sign, and the, the carpet. I don't even know what, how to, to say this. And now we interpret the string Netherlands as the at sign. We interpret the Netherlands with quotes, the literal, as the dollar sign in Amsterdam as a per percentage time. So we have a different universe and we map each term again to one of the elements of the universe. And then we have to define our, our interpretations for the predicates again. And in this example, we interpret the name relation that it must hold between the at sign and the dollar sign and the has capital relation must hold between the at sign and the percentage sign. So these are four different interpretations. First three have the same universe, the, the second one has a, another universe, and now the question is of course, which of those four is a model of the knowledge base? Let's look at this first so that you can, can see this and think a little bit what you think yourself to the question. The green one is a model, the green ones are models, the red one is not a model. And why is this the case? If you look at what we did here, we have our graph, we have our names, words, Netherlands, and our concept Netherlands. Then if Netherlands is mapped to the N element of the universe and Netherlands in strings is mapped to the NN element, the name of Netherlands, and Amsterdam is mapped to A, then clearly in the interpretation of the S capital relation that we have here, N and A are in relation. So this is the question, 
is this the case? And you see that is indeed the case. So n n is the interpretation of Netherlands in quotes. N is the interpretation of Netherlands. And there is a relation between n and n. So both the constraints of the knowledge base, both axioms, are satisfied in this specific interpretation. In this second interpretation, there is also some more information, namely that there's a link between n and r. But this doesn't really matter because the only thing that is constrained is the relation between the Netherlands and the Netherlands name, so the n and the nn, and the Netherlands and Amsterdam. So if you have more information in your interpretation, it doesn't matter. Whereas in the opposite case, if you look at the third example, you have a relation between n and n, n. So this is fine, this part of the, the graphics, but the has capital relation is not satisfied in this, the second axiom is not satisfied in this interpretation because this green link, here we are, this green link does not exist. This link between N and A does not exist. And that's why this third one is not a model for the knowledge base we have above. The one we have with the weird vocabulary at an S and, and percentage is a model. Because if you, we translate it again, then there is uh, the translation of uh, Netherlands name Netherlands. Netherlands was the app, the, the ad sign, Netherlands in quotes was the dollar sign. And ex exactly there is a relation, a name relation between these two objects in our interpretation. So that one is satisfied. And Amsterdam is, is, is uh, represented as a, as a percentage sign. Netherlands is, is uh, the ad sign. So we have the relation Netherlands has capital Amsterdam in the interpretation of the has capital relation. So basically the green ones are models and the red one is not a model. So the question now is what does it tell us about entailment? Because the definition was that uh, a triple is entailed if it is true in all the models of the knowledge base. So now, Cloud, let's now look at some of the models because we don't have all of the models, of course. Let's look at some of the models of the knowledge base. And um, this is basically the three models that we had, uh, we had uh, um, identified in the previous slide. And now let's see why, what does it tell us about the things that are common to those? Basically, the, the, the extra information that we have in the second model, namely that N and R are in the interpretation of the has capital relation, is not, cannot be relevant because it's not true in the other ones. So basically, the only thing that we can see in the, is common to these things is that the thing that I interpret as NN or dollar is related to the thing that I relate to N and the, uh, the, the, the add sign and that the n and the add sign is related to the a and the percentage sign. So we have this first bit, Netherlands, name Netherlands, has to be true in all the models. And the second part, that the Netherlands has capital Amsterdam, is also true in all the models. So whenever something is in the graph, then it also occurs in all the models, in, in the interpretations of each of the nodes. So in other words, what is entailed are all the subgraphs of this simple knowledge graph. So this if you really understood most of what I said, then you might be rather angry. Because in a way, what I defined you just gave you is a really rather complex way of saying that a formula is entailed, a triple is entailed, if it is subgraph of the knowledge base. But I think it is a 
feature rather than a bug that a simple knowledge graph has also a simple semantics. So the simple semantics for simple knowledge graphs, even though they have quite some mathematical brackets and formulas and so forth, they are very simple if you think about it carefully and if you really understand them. But that's not a problem, that is good. So the definition is really that a set of triple is entailed by knowledge graph if and only if it's a subgraph of the knowledge graph. And this co-occurs, this definition co-occurs with the definition of entailment that I gave you semantically. So basically what this gives you is already a calculus. So we can now easily calculate all the entailed triples. It's not much more, but it's also not much less than this link between entailment and subgraphs. Because now we have a formal notion for what is true with respect to simple knowledge graphs. And the good thing is that it's even very easy to calculate. And more importantly, it's very easy to extend. And this is what we're going to do the next weeks. We will think about variables, about the blank nodes that I talked about. We will think about hierarchies. We will think about domain and range restrictions, etc., etc. And the more the weeks and the modules progress, the more complex the knowledge graphs will become, and also the more complex the logics behind this. Thank you. Thank you.